Hello, and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. Today's topic is B, or brainwave entrainment. And today's question is, would it be okay to enjoy improved brain function? Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly answer that yes. So this is part of our A, B, C, and Ds of Health Concerns series. I'm your host, Barbara Carr, and I'm a certified health consultant with Bionic Health today. So some of the concerns we'll talk about over the next few weeks will be A for arthritis, aches and pains, and acute trauma. B for brain and brainwave entrainment, which is the subject today. C for cardiac and circulatory concerns. C for cancer. And D for diabetes. So let's discuss today B for brainwave entrainment. We're going to look at what is it and how does it work. So have you ever found yourself tapping your foot in response to the beat of your favorite music? Have you ever felt soothed or invigorated by the music playing or beats of the drum of music? This is called spontaneous synchronization, or the ability of one object to affect another to line up, to harmonize, or to synchronize together. In 1665, Dutch physicist Christian Huygens noted that two clocks with pendulums sorry, pendulum swinging at different speeds would consistently synchronize or resonate with each other. How is this possible? Well, I found a little short video clip that demonstrates how this works with um, a set of pendulums. So let's just uh, have a quick watch of that. So this video is put together by Ross Palmer. Thank you, Ross. And it just shows synchronization with some um, pendulum swinging here. So you can see that they're out of alignment right now. We started them at different times. Now the reason he's putting that up on the hands is because it just um, speeds up the synchronization. You see how they're starting to line up or synchronize together. And this will be affected if another aspect of like a magnetic field or a loud noise would come in and disrupt this pattern. So basically that's giving us a pretty good idea of what synchronization is. So basically the energy transferred through a sound, pulse, or electromagnetic wave will affect another object within its path. Synchronized oscillation happens on both cosmic and subatomic levels, says Stephen Strogratz of Cornell University. And what's amazing, he goes on to say, is not just the different size scales, but the different frequencies, which range from billions of oscillations per second to one oscillation in a million years. So we're surrounded by this um, understanding of how energy is transferred and we affect each other. So how can this phenomenon be utilized in brainwave entrainment? The human brain contains around 100 billion neurons. We know that the brain functions in part by the firing of neurons. In fact, epilepsy results from nerve cells firing in synchrony when they shouldn't. When neurons communicate with each other, they create electrical activity that can be measured through EEGs, or electroencephalographs, and other devices. When the brain is given a stimulus through ears, eyes, or other stimulus, it responds with an electrical charge called a cortical evoked response. And you can see here the, the underlying uh, similarity here, that when that pulse of sound comes on, that cortical evoked response uh, responds to it. So the correct stimulus will cause the brain waves to synchronize to that same electrical cycle. And we know that brain waves can be stimulated to change a person's behavior. So the question would be, is what behavior would we like to see changed or adapted? And what correct stimulus will cause that to happen? The human brain has two parts connected through the corpus callosum. And people who have similar activity in both brain parts are usually happier, more content, healthier, emotionally more stable, 
and less prone to mental dysfunction. The brain produces all wavelengths simultaneously, but the specific frequency that is most prevalent at the time will determine the state that the person is in, whether that's wakeful, whether that's drowsy, whether that's a state of over-alertness. Brain waves are able to be measured and have been categorized into different hertz levels, which I'm sure many of us are familiar with. So the delta is up to four hertz, is that dreamless sleep with almost no consciousness. During that time, there's a stimulation to activate cell regeneration. So if you're not able to get to that delta state of that real dreamless sleep, then you're being compromised with your cell regeneration, and that can be a huge concern for many people. The theta is up to four to seven hertz. It's that stage of deep relaxation, but light sleep. And it has an improvement of senses for creativity. So that's your dream state and your creativity aspect. Alpha is approximately eight to 12 hertz. And that's your pre-sleep or just before waking state where you're daydreaming or you're alert and relaxed. This aspect activates the parasympathetic nervous system and therefore your stress and you have stress and pain reduction through this cycle. The beta at approximately 12 to 30 hertz is while you're wide awake and alert. By observing a person's brainwave patterns, you can actually see that anxious people tend to produce an overabundance of high beta waves. They're wide awake, they're alert, whereas people with ADD or ADHD tend to produce an overabundance of slower alpha theta brain waves. So they're more in that daydreaming light sleep state, which actually improves their senses for creativity. And we've certainly seen that. But, um, history has proven that many people that have shown to have ADD or ADHD have been extremely creative. So what external stimulation will affect the brain? Well, sound therapy through music or tones stimulating through the ears will affect the brain. Color therapy or chromotherapy stimulating through the eyes will affect the brain. So let's examine both of those. Let's look at some sound aspects. So isochronic tone is a tone that's being turned on and off rapidly. It creates sharp, distinctive pulses of sound that can be varied to bring the brain into synchronization. And it's found to be the most effective tone to initiate that cortical evoked response. So looking at the picture frame here, we see that, see that after six minutes of the brain's response to a 10 hertz entrainment, you're seeing that cortical evoked response take place. So other aspects of sound are binaural beats, and many of us are familiar with that term, but what do we really understand about that? So binaural beats are really auditory illusions that are created by two different pure tones, one through each ear, that makes the listener perceive a third sound. So this can be created by varying the two tones in order to create a specific third beat. So let's look at an example of that. So let's look at a pure tone number one in the right ear of 530 hertz, and we subtract a pure tone of two in the left ear of 520 hertz. So that would equal an auditory illusion tone of 10 hertz, which would be that tone number three. Now this just happens to be in the frequency of alpha brain waves in this um, example that we're showing here, but this can be manipulated to create whatever brain wave function that you would choose to have through binaural beats. And many people have used this for, say, for example, study, you know, putting on Baroque music that has this binaural beat in the base of this alpha brain waves where they can rest and relax and be very creative. Research with EEG measurements have shown that music and sound can contribute to the treatment and management of many disorders, such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, cerebral palsy, Alzheimer's disease, autism, and more concerns that affect the brain and central nervous system. Well, let's examine color. Isaac Newton proved that white light is actually made up of colors through the use of prisms. In human color psychology, different colors are associated with different emotions or brain responses. So let's look at red. Red appears to carry the strongest reaction of all colors. 
as the color decreases, so does the level of reaction. Therefore, orange, yellow, down to a white, will decrease that reaction. It's associated with stimulation, with vitality, heat, energy, and blood. It's been documented to have positive effects on circulation, chronic illness, non-infective wounds, and strengthens the kidneys, heart, muscles, blood, lungs, and bones. The color green is frequently linked to healing, cooling, calming, soothing, or balance. It appears to create positive effects on the liver, painful joints, swelling or gross, cysts, tumors, gout, diabetes, and allergies. It appears to promote healthy bones and has been shown to be anti-inflammatory and a pituitary stimulant. The color blue is known for relieving headaches and migraines, eye strain, earache, and sore throats. It's calming, facilitating restful sleep, peace, and openness. It's documented to be pain relieving, lowers blood pressure and fever. Now there's many, many different aspects of chromotherapy and variations of the red, green, and blue. So a um, very interesting topic to explore. For more details, you can ask us for a brief introduction to brainwave entrainment by Swiss Bionic Solutions. So going back to today's question, uh, would it be okay to enjoy improved brain function? Let's look at two systems by Swiss Bionic Solutions that offer brainwave entrainment. So the ISLRS, um, Integrated Sound Light Relaxation System, and the Omni Brain. The ISLRS, an integrated sound and light relaxation system, can best be described as a spa for your brain. It works together with the IMRS system to melt away stress, improve oxygen circulation to your brain, deepen your ability to enjoy relaxing, restorative sleep, and naturally improve emotional balance without drugs or side effects. The ISLRS comes with the following features. The suede leather goggles for visual stimulation, including high-end earplugs, to experience clear and rich sound of both music and tones, and going back to that binaural rhythm beats, which operates on a cheap channel system or basically two-ear system. This is uh, applied within the ISLRS system. The color options of red, blue, or green LEDs with dimmer switch. It has an SD card with 45 minutes of anticipated music, and those levels within that music are anywhere from 2 to 18 hertz. It's a built-in music player in the IMRS, and it is fully synchronized with every IMRS whole body mat application to experience a full body pulse electromagnetic field along with the spa for your brain. The Omni Brain is a similar three-way brainwave entrainment system, which is capable of gaining resonances based on light, tone, and color. The goggle is again made of suede leather and contains built-in high-end earphones for the tone and music stimulus. A flexible PCB with red, green, and blue LEDs creates your desired light and color frequencies. But this, in this OmniBrain system, all patterns can be individually adjusted to create whatever color combination you desire. It also has a two-channel brainwave entrainment system that works independently with the right and left channel. So this is a um, uh, image of the color settings here. So you can see that there's the slider bars. So you have the option to have all red, no green, no blue, all green, no red, no blue, any combination of the three of those, and that will show up. The color combination that you create will show up in this bar down here. You can adjust the brightness. You can adjust the time settings. You can turn the music or the tones on or off. So the Omnibrain two-channel brainwave entrainment system can be simultaneously used together with the magnetic resonance stimulation application that's provided by the IMRS Omni in one. And this supports and optimizes all the desired wellness effect and basically saves a lot of time. So this is housed in an Android platform, as you see here, being utilized with um, the Spot application as well. So for details on the full applications of the IMRS and Omni in one systems, you can visit bionichealthtoday.com or contact the person who invited you to watch this video. And if you've been following along in our series, you probably already had some background information on what pulse electromagnetic fields are and the applications that it has on your whole body.
So we've been discussing today B for brainwave entrainment. We've looked at what it is, how it works, and what systems will provide this support. So the question now is, would you benefit from a spot for the brain? Now, if you've got more questions, would like more information on brainwave entrainment or the IMRS systems, we invite you to contact the person who invited you to watch this video or visit bionichealthtoday.com. And we want to thank you tremendously for attending Wellness Wednesdays. And again, today's topic was B for brainwave entrainment. And today's question was, would it be okay to enjoy improved brain function? And as part of our series of A, B, C, and Ds of health concerns, which you can watch more of at bionichealthtoday.com, if you've missed some of those, just go to the blog site. And I'm your host, Barbara Carr, a certified health consultant with bionichealthtoday.com. And if you've enjoyed this or would like to um, share this with your friends, just click below to share. Enjoy your day and take joy in your journey.